Amen. Well, today our message is Come to Me, and we're going to look at some of the gracious invitations of the Lord Jesus Christ in Scripture. We're going to begin in Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, and Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. What a sweet and gracious invitation come to me. He's not looking to repel us, to push us back, but he's inviting us to come. And what an amazing offer he gives. I will give you rest. Whatever your burden, whatever is is your labor, whatever your work, whatever it is that is, that is uh, holding you down, I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me. Whether saints, whether sinners, whatever our burden, whatever our labor, he says, I will give you rest. The invitation is to all who are weary, who are disappointed, who are discouraged, those in fear, those living with guilt. Whatever your burden, I will give you rest. When you're feeling weak, he says, come and take my yoke, take my yoke upon you. Allow me to be linked together, yoked together with you and walk with you through difficult times and through the burden and through the daily challenges of life. I will give you rest, rest, relief. And it's offered not just as a temporary one time, but a refreshing rest through your journey. As the labors become difficult, we can go to Jesus. We can go to him and find that rest. My yoke, take my yoke on you. Not the Satan's, not Satan's yoke, not the world's yoke, but take my yoke upon you. And what is his yoke? His yoke is to do the Father's will. He said, I delight to do my Father's will. I delight to be in submission to God the Father. And so his yoke is an absolute submission to Christ and to God, to his purposes, to his call, to his work on this earth. And that's a good thing, to be yoked together with him in his purposes and in his plan. We are co-workers, as the scripture says, co-workers together with him, co-workers together with Christ. But you know, when we're yoked together with him, we take his yoke upon us. We are there shoulder to shoulder with him. And guess who does the heavy lifting? Guess who does the heavy pushing? We put those burdens upon him. Another scripture says, cast your burdens unto him, for he will care for you. And he does. He'll do that heavy lifting. He'll do that heavy pulling when we're yoked together with him. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And why is it light and why is it easy? Because he is there and we are journeying with him and doing it in his strength. And his yoke is not just a hard rough, coarse piece of wood, but his yoke is grace-lined. There's a softening to it because of his grace. Take my yoke upon you, he says. But he also says, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. So much that we can learn from Christ as we, we look at the example of scripture, we listen to his teaching. We see what the the apostles, what the other writers of the, of the New Testament have said about him, what the, the Old Testament prophets prophesied about him. We get to know him. Learn from me. And then the two things that he says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. Get close to me. The beginning of this passage was, uh, was, was right there, that invitation. Come to me. Get close to me. Get yoked with me, walk with me, walk with me in experience, walk with me in step. 
Be schooled in the Word of God, in the Scriptures, in the Bible. Be schooled in prayer. Get to know me in times of prayer. And as you call out to me, listen for my voice by the Spirit. Be schooled in experience. Be schooled in the work that I have called you to do. Because that yoke connotates that there is work to do. And we must be about God's business. And again, it's not, a, it's not an onerous thing. But it's a joyful care, as Jesus said, I delight to do my Father's will. Learn of me and learn from me. Learn the patience, patience in suffering. The daily, patience in the daily, what we call the daily grind. Let it not be a daily grind, but learn from me. And yes, you will be tired, but here he's talking about that rest that we also receive along the way. Walk humbly, walk with trust, walk in love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and walk also in joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And then he says, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest for your souls, the rest of God. The rest of God, which is temporal for today, but it also is eternal. Come to me, all who labor, who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest and take my yoke on you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And this is not just a coffee break. It's not just a 15-minute rest break that we get from our, from our duties, but it's a deep abiding resting in God, knowing how to abide in Him. And it's a permanent and undisturbed rest that we have because we are refreshed in his presence, undisturbed. The children of Israel, they knew a certain rest as they wandered the, the wilderness for 40 years, but they didn't fully rest until they came to that promised land. And like you and I, we do get rest and we have that temporal, but we also look forward to that rest that will be eternal. Let's look at some other invitations from Jesus as well. In John chapter 1, he speaks to two of John's disciples. And John was out baptizing in the Jordan, and he saw Jesus uh, passing by. And when he did, he saw him, and he, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. And verse 37, John chapter 1, verse well, let's read 35 and, and on. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them, follow, saw them following and asked, What do you want? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. And so they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Two disciples, and they followed Jesus. It sounds like they followed him a little bit from a distance, as if they didn't want him to know that they were following. They were there. And Jesus turns around and he asks them, What do you want? What are you looking for? What's up? Why are you following me? And I'm sure that they were a little bit startled because they were probably a little afraid, a little bit of a little bit in awe of this one that that uh, that John has talking about, the Lamb of God. And they asked the question, where are you staying? Where do you abide? And we talked about this uh, recently. It was not, I don't think, a question just simply of the knowing the address, knowing the, knowing the residence, but, but who are you really? The question was much deeper. And Jesus, even in asking the question, what do you want? He was looking into their, their motives. What is it you're after? Why is it you're following me? It's not just one thing. It's not a quick answer that they're going to receive here. But why do you follow me? Where are you staying? Where do you abide? And Jesus gives the invitation, come and see. Come and see. Come and get to know me. And again, what a beautiful invitation. Come to me. Come with me. Come and see where it is I'm going. Come and see the place that I stay. But come and see me in my relationship with the Father. Come and get to know me. What a beautiful invitation. Come 
two guests come to my dwelling place. And it says that they, they went to his dwelling place and they, they spent the rest of the day. And do you think that they were just there admiring and looking? Oh, what a beautiful place. Isn't this a nice location? What a beautiful view. Oh, this building is put together so well. That was not the conversation. They came to get to know Jesus. And his invitation was in inviting them home, come and get to know me. And they spent the day getting to know him. Where do you abide? Where do you live? Help us to understand you. Help us to understand we've heard about you. We've heard about you from John. We want to understand who you are and where you live. They were intrigued. They were intrigued by his forgiveness. The Lamb of God, the one of the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. So who is this? They were intrigued and they wanted to wanted his wisdom, his peace, his power to know the Spirit of God. They followed a few steps behind, watching, waiting, wondering. Why are you following me? And then Jesus invites them, come along with me, come and see. Leave John and come and follow me. Let me show you, let me show you who I am. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 21, there was a rich young man who came to Jesus and it says that he came running. And when he reached Jesus, he knelt down, Nate knelt down in front of him and he, and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to get this eternal life? And they have a conversation and, and he says that, that I've kept all the commandments. I do all of those things. I keep the law. And Jesus says to him in Mark 10 and verse 21, Jesus looked at him and he loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go and sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Another gracious invitation. Leave, leave the things of the world and come and follow me. What an interesting conversation. And we see here that this man, again, he came, he came humbly. He came searching after, after the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knelt there and he really was searching out to God here. And Jesus didn't turn him away, but Jesus, it says, looked on him, looked at him and loved him. He looked with compassion. He looked with love. He cared about this young man who had come to him with these big questions. Even Paul wrote in Galatians 2 and verse 20, he loved me and gave himself for me. And if each, each of us that know the Lord Jesus Christ, we can also say the same thing. He loved me. And just like that rich young ruler that we see in this, in this chapter in Mark, Jesus looked on us in love. And still he looks on us with love. But he says one thing that you lack. One thing you lack, one thing that you're missing is you put your trust in riches and you need to put your trust in me. You put your, your, your trust and your, your uh, um, fame in, in your accomplishments, but you need to put your trust in me, trust in my grace. You want to hang on to the things of the world. You want your position and your place in this world. And Jesus says simply, Leave all of it behind and come and follow me. And some might say, well, this is so harsh. How could he say to, to leave everything behind and, and, and then just come and follow me? What will I eat? What will I put on? But we also know from the scriptures, the Lord says, don't worry about what to eat, what to put on, about where to live. Even I myself, I don't have where to live. Don't worry about those things. Just come and follow me. Trust me and I will take care of you. So here is this earnest man, this, this, this humble man that he came and he knelt before the Lord Jesus Christ and searching for truth and what must I do? What must I do to inherit an eternal life? I'm moral, I keep the law, but Jesus said, that's not enough. Come and follow me. Was he convinced? It seems he wasn't because it says that in, later in that, in that same chapter, Mark 10, that he was discouraged and he walked away 
and he didn't follow Jesus. The cost was too high. He saw the cost as too high because he was giving up some of the world's goods. He was giving up wealth. And he was sad that he needed to give anything up. But yet his treasure would have been so much greater to follow Christ. Follow Christ into his kingdom. Follow Christ into eternal life. But it says that he was sad and he went away. But the invitation was still there. And the invitation again is for each one, come and follow me. What must I do? It's not about the things we do. It's not about the keeping of the law. And absolutely, yes, we must live a moral life. We must live according to the scriptures. But he says, come and follow me. Allow me to do the changing. Allow me to help you. And you will have great riches in your life. That peace that passes understanding. Joy unspeakable. Come and follow me. Another invitation comes in John 7 and verse 37. And he's speaking to the crowd here. It was after a, a great festival or at the end of the festival. John 7 and verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, verse 38, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Come and drink. Are you thirsty? Are you worn out? Are you suffering? Come to me and drink. Come to me and be refreshed. Come and drink of the truth of, of the Spirit, of the, of the scriptures. Come to me, quench your thirsty soul, satisfy your thirsty soul. Scripture says that we should thirst after righteousness. And I will satisfy you, I will give you to drink. And then he goes on to say that even whoever believes in me will have this living water within you, an inner life and, and inner springs. Come to me. John 21 and verse 12, he says to the disciples, come and dine. They'd been on a fishing journey over the night and they'd caught nothing. And he told them to cast their nets on the other side and they cast their nets on the other side. And miraculously, 153 fish came into their nets when they cast on the other side. But then when they landed, as they came in with their, their catch of all of those fish, all of those fish, when they landed, verse 9 of, of John 21, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. And it was full of the large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dare ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Come and dine. Come and dine. And you know, it's about the fellowship, the fellowship of coming close to him. Come and let's eat. Come and let's fellowship. What a beautiful invitation to each of us again. Come and dine. There's a beautiful little song, Come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. You can feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitudes and turned the water into wine to the hungry calleth now. Come and dine. What a beautiful, beautiful invitation. Come and spend time with me. Come and dine. Come and enjoy. Let us take this together. How sweet. Later, he would call to his 12 close disciples and say to them, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And he gave them bread and he gave them a cup, as we will do in remembrance of him in just a few moments. But how beautiful it is when he says to us, Come and dine. Don't we all just respond when someone says, Supper is ready, breakfast is ready, whatever meal it is, Come to the table. That's Jesus' invitation. Come to the table. Come and dine. 
Well, we began with rest and we're going to finish with rest. And one last uh, scripture from Mark chapter 6 and verse 31. Or 30 and 31. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. The apostles earlier, they'd been sent out and they had gone preaching two by two. They'd been casting demons out. They'd been healing the sick. They'd been so busy and they came back and they were tired. They came back, it says, reporting all of the things. They had questions. They had boasts. They were excited about what had happened. But at the same time, they were tired. and They didn't even have time to stop and to eat. They had worked. They'd served. But now they were invited to take time alone with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come and take time. Come and rest. Just you and me. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Wow. What a beautiful invitation again as Christ calls his disciples, calls his apostles, calls those that were laboring in his vineyard. He calls them to come and rest. And he calls them to come and do that with him. Come near me. Come and hear from me. Let's rest together. Let's talk together. Let's share together. They were troubled. They had questions. They wondered why some responded and others didn't. They had so, so many things. They were, they were sorrowful. Earlier in that chapter, we hear that John was imprisoned and, and later beheaded. And the biggest thing is they were tired. They had given all. They had journeyed. They'd gone by foot. They'd gone from, from town to town and village to village. But now they're invited to come and be alone with God, to be alone with Jesus. When they decided, the disciples returned, they had many things to tell Jesus, and they gave all of those reports, and Jesus recognizing they were tired and they needed his rest. Come and get some rest. Come with me alone. Come with me to the quiet place. Come alone and let's rest. It's not just about resting. It's not just about finding a comfortable place, but we need to recognize that real rest comes in our relationship with God. Come. He didn't say go, go to the hills, go to a forest, go to a valley, go into the shade. He didn't say go, but he says come. Come with me. And he never leaves us. He never abandons us. He never forsakes us. He says come with me. Come with me. And then how beautifully, come with me by yourselves. It's personal. Come with me. Come with me by yourselves, together, to a quiet place. Let's go to that quiet place together, and I'll show you what rest is. Come with me and get some rest. So we see here. The work is great. The disciples, after this, they went and they still worked. And they worked to the day that they died. And they went to see Jesus face to face again. But there were those times when they needed his rest. And Jesus taught them how to pull aside. And not just to enjoy a good meal and not just to enjoy a good drink but to come aside and rest with him. That's where our rest is. Our opening scripture, come to me, all who, are, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, take my yoke on you, and you will find rest for your souls. Your rest is found in Jesus. Communion, with him, time spent together, hearing, speaking, and resting in his presence. 
Let's join together in this beautiful hymn. Jesus, I am resting, resting in the joy of what thou art. Amen. Set me round with blessings, my 